Today, we're going to be exploring Athens, Greece. So whether you are Greek island hopping and starting here, or you're getting on a cruise in Athens or ending in Athens, this guide is going to be for you. We're going to be talking about where you should stay, where you should eat, and all the things that you need to see. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and like and leave some comments down below if you have questions or recommendations as well. Let's get started. All right, let's start with where to stay. Now, typically people like to stay here in central Athens, but it can be very expensive during peak season. I'm talking like four, five, six hundred, eight hundred dollars a night. Not to say there aren't other cheaper options, but I found that to be the average. We stayed at the Grand Hyatt, which is about a mile down the strip. Um, and it was absolutely beautiful. The rooms are huge for Europe. I'm not accustomed to rooms being this big. And if you have a trip coming up to Athens that you want some help with or Greece in general or wherever, please let us help you. We would love to work with you and help you find the land trip or cruise of your dreams. But one of the perks of staying at the Hyatt is obviously we earned our World of Hyatt points. The rooms were big, especially since we were traveling with our daughter and could have an extra bed option for her like you see. Now, I will say it does look a pinch sketch from the outside because there are um, strip bars across the way. But um, honestly, it didn't really bother us. And one of the things that was great is there's a hop on hop off bus that actually picks up right in front of the Grand Hyatt that takes you right up to where all the sites are. And this is what an Acropolis view room looks like for reference. There's a beautiful rooftop bar where you can see the Acropolis. It was absolutely gorgeous. There's a restaurant too, and let's hop on the bus. All right, so here are some things to see and do. I'm going to put a link down below because there's a lot of sites like Viator and whatnot that sell the tickets for all the archeological sites that you would need to get into, but you can actually purchase it slightly cheaper directly from the Greek government. The website's a little confusing, so I've done all the work and kind of clicked through, so make sure you check down there for that. This is the Temple of Zeus. It's a little underwhelming compared to some of the other sites, but I feel like it's one of those things that you have to do. And what I found really neat with all of these different sites is that there was a lot of accommodations nearby. When I say accommodations, I'm talking about like cafes and places where you can get water. Because if you're coming here during the summer, it gets so hot, unbelievably hot. So I highly recommend checking out these places in the earlier part of the day. Here's the little cafe at Temple of Zeus. And then we hopped right back on the bus to head to some more stops. The next stop on here was the Hellenic Parliament building. This is where you can watch that famous changing of the guards that you see on every single Athens video out there. So this is a really neat stop. Now I have to say my favorite building stops were over here, the National Library, the University of Athens. These buildings were stunning. I totally felt like I was living my Disney Golden Age 90s Hercules moments with the architecture here, the Socrates statue, the statue of Athena. Absolutely incredible. Highly recommend. Now, here's a little pro tip. I've been a fan of Kares Skincare. It's a Greek line, and there's also obviously other skincares in here. You can buy this kind of stuff 10 times cheaper, I swear, in Europe. So if you like skincare, check it out. Next, there is Manastraki Square. Now, this is obviously super touristy. You see all the people, but um, it is absolutely worth it because there's more sites around there. But we're going to skip back and head up the Acropolis Hill. Keep in mind that this trek takes about 15 to 20 minutes from the bottom. Take your time. The sites are beautiful. Bring a camera. And one of my pro tips, which you're going to see later on here, is a reason why, is to try to schedule for the latest entry because the sites are absolutely worth it. Once you get to the top, another pro tip is be cognizant of what you're wearing. I wore this really short, cute sundress and um, it was blowing around everywhere. So here's that pro tip. Book that time close to sunset because these views are incredible and also wear good shoes because that marble gets super slippery. This right here is a great vantage point coming back down for sunset. And some people head up on that rock over there to watch. Another site is Hadrian's Library. This was actually my favorite ruins in Athens to see, obviously, other than the Pantheon. Truly incredible. Some of these structures were in really, really great condition. And all of these entry passes and whatnot 
are the same as that ticket that I mentioned before at Temple of Zeus. These are not free to walk in. You can look in from the outside for free, but if you want to walk around in here like this, you have to purchase that ticket. And the one pass I included earlier includes all of the sites, so you're not buying just a la carte for the Acropolis. Do you like saving money on travel? Check out my free Ultimate Travel Savings Guide down below. There are tips for saving on airfare, hotels, cruises, tickets, you name it. So don't forget to check that out. Next, where to eat. Now this is quintessential for travel. I have a few recommendations here. So this one's over by Monastraki Squares. I'm gonna probably botch it, it's F. Karis. This was our first meal here in Athens. We definitely wanted to do the souvlaki roasted style meats and honestly, everything we had here was incredible. We did a family style order. The cheeses were great. The meats were great. I would definitely recommend checking this out. Now, if you want to save all these places that I'm showing you, check down in the bio is my out of office link and you can actually just save all these to your free out of office profile app. Next, Fairy Tale Athens. Now, this is not a Greek food place, but it is definitely Instagram heaven and the food was actually really good too. This is the rooftop area. There's an elevator that takes you back down to the main floors, which is where we are going now. And I'm going to walk around and show you what that looks like. But it is girly. It is fun. It is pink. It is so well themed. The food is definitely super fanciful. The cocktails are very fanciful. Olivia and Jeff definitely enjoyed their time in here. You can also book this place for afternoon tea. And like I said, you guys are getting a full walk around of this place because you can decide if you want to sit in this garden room or if you want to sit in the pink room, which is what we opted to. But they do a really cool afternoon tea. The um, food items in general are a bit more on the sugary side for the good stuff. You'll see Olivia ordered this hot cocoa combination. I ordered this really fun cocktail with gin and passion fruit, which was really good. The little popcorn was free. And another tip about eating out in Greece at most restaurants is there'll always kind of be a little table something for free. This restaurant was the popcorn, but at most regular Greek restaurants, you actually get like a free little dessert at the end. I got the acai bowl because I was craving some protein. Olivia got the waffles. They were all super good. I hope you try this out. Now we ate here at this eatery for breakfast and oh my gosh, these are the best potatoes that I've ever had in my life. They have outdoor seating as you can see here. They're down near a bunch of other restaurants just down from Monastraki Square. The falafel was absolutely incredible. The pita bread was great and this was a really great budget option again. Had this saved in my out of office profile. The free link to that is down below. Olivia got pancakes, but those potatoes, I can't even begin to tell you guys, those potatoes were just absolutely incredible. Jeff got a breakfast gyro. I got a regular breakfast. The grilled uh, halloumi cheese was awesome. We went here for dinner one night. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. And this might have been our favorite meal of the whole trip. These are a little freebie that they brought out for us to try. It's kind of like a deli and cold items to go kind of place. Um, I think they also do butcher stuff. This is kind of what the menu looks like. I'm gonna pause here so you guys can take a look. Food was so good. Even the grape leaf things, which I'm typically not a huge fan of, were absolutely incredible. Jeff got this flatbread. We got this meat platter to try with cured meats. Olivia got this souvlaki style yuro chicken with really good potatoes. And then I got this lamb and potato thing that just tasted like something that you would eat for breakfast. It's super hearty. The Greek yogurt was incredible, as well as the baklava. Now this is a little pro tip. This fresco yogurt bar, get the pomegranate Greek yogurt and thank me. It's almost better than any ice cream you'll ever eat. Bonus tip for cruisers. So this is the cruise port, super easy to navigate, and these buses actually run all the way back into central Athens if you wanna take a hop on, hop off bus. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave any questions or comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.